way this movie came about was that I was in San Francisco and I was scouting locations for a movie that ironically I never wound up making. But when I was down at Fisherman's Wharf, I saw a sign and it said, World War II submarine tour is $2. And my eyebrows went up and I thought, that's really neat. I've always wanted to go board a submarine. Uh, months later, the project I was working on had stalled out. I had never gotten a chance to go aboard that submarine, and I said to myself, I, I want to write a movie about something that would really interest me. And that World War II submarine just popped in my head, and I said, i, I got to go back there and see that. And so I went back to San Francisco, and I went aboard the submarine, and I was just hooked. And I spent the whole day just standing on this submarine, trying to soak in its ambiance and trying to understand the courage of the young men who went out to see in these things. For years, Dino's always wanted to remake a, a few films that he did about World War I and World War II, and it was never the right timing. But we always loved that, that time period of, of, of filmmaking because you know, war pictures are ever so emotional, dramatic, and you know, in the face of tragedy always. So I mean, to find a good script nowadays is very difficult, to find a good story. It was, you know, we were searching to pull from, from that era. In all my life, in all my career, in the last 50 years in making movies, I always like to make epic movies. Waterloo, War and Peace, Baramba, The Bible, many, many pictures. And during the shooting of Breakdown with John Mastow, I said to John, John, I want to do World War II movie. I have a different story in my mind, different kind of a movie. Uh, John said to me, Dino, if you want to do World War II story, I have a picture about the submarine. I give the first draft to him. I did this first draft and I love it. Because fortunately of the success of Breakdown, I was given the opportunity to kind of uh, do a bigger movie next and I presented this script and everyone said okay we'll, we'll back that and then I really went to work and I got very serious about the technical details I went out and surrounded myself with World War II submariners I um, did as much research as I'd done I went and did even more research and my goal was really to make an old-fashioned World War II submarine movie um, I remember you know, sometimes late at night as a kid and, and even as an adult flipping around on TV and seeing a great old movie like Run Silent, Run Deep or Destination Tokyo. And I wanted to make a movie that was in that vein and that could recall some of those feelings that I had when I first watched those pictures. Um, so when you say to me that uh, it's an old fashioned kind of filmmaking, that's the best compliment you can pay to me because to me the story is the star of this movie. The idea of doing a World War II movie, you know, seven or eight years ago, that was a very uncommercial idea. So I said, I'm writing a World War II movie set in the water, and nobody ever heard of me. What am I doing? I'm wasting my time. And yet, I was so fascinated by the subject matter that I just felt compelled to keep writing. And for me, the, the coming up with the story, that was that was fun, and, and, and working on all the action beats, that was fun. But for me, the big challenge was I couldn't get my sort of hands around the idea of these, who are these people that had the courage to go do this thing? I just, I, I didn't understand it. Oh, gee, it's sort of a Hollywood movie, they cast everybody young to make it, you know, appealing to the young audience. Well, the fact is, these guys were young. Um, the other officers were often early, mid-twenties. So this was a young, young bunch of people. And you don't have to be, what, a 30-year-old woman to see this and think that some of these kids on here, like Thomas Curie and Will Estes, are, could be their, their, their boys. the audience to really understand the submarining that went on in World War II because it was a very specific kind of activity um, and in that sense everything in this movie is 100% authentic about the submarining. We had retired World War II submariners on the set at all times. We had to watch the documentaries and read the books and know what the plainsman does to a helmsman does. Right. Movement and execution um, 
and that's when the stuff really works. When you see, you know, an order being given, an order being taken, an action being put, simultaneous actions happen at the same time, and the thought being processed. Give me the one MC going left, back. This, you know, that is the nice dexterity that you see these. It happens, man. When you're in an extreme situation, it can either be complete chaos, or if you're good at what you do, it is so on the money and works so well, and you're everyone's so hyper aware and does their job so well that it works like perfection. It's the ocean, it's the sea, and if one person screws up, everybody dies. The uh, challenge writing this movie, which was, who had the courage to do these things? What superhuman courage or, or qualities do these people possess to have the Battle of the Atlantic was an extraordinary time. It was, um, uh, very few people realize this, but in the um, first part of 1942, really from the very end of January uh, through to basically late in the summer, uh, we were getting our butts kicked right off the eastern seaboard of the United States. The government kept it pretty quiet. Um, and anecdotally, people knew that that U-boats, uh, you know, which the German submarines were coming very close to shore, but people didn't realize how much of a toll they were taking. And what people don't even know to this day is that a quarter of all the ships sunk in the Battle of the Atlantic were sunk right off the eastern seaboard of the United States. The Germans were, were about to take over the world, you know, and it would have ruined American life the way they knew it. So it was a very serious thing to serve your country and to fight for um, the things that we had in America. Well, we felt a responsibility as actors making this movie, uh, it was an honor to play these characters, but also, you know, we wanted to get it right. Uh, we wanted to, because the movie, even though it's a work of fiction, it symbolizes and represents what these guys went through. We weren't playing uh, specific people that had lived, mm -hmm. but, um, uh, but we were playing characters that, you know, had survived in that time and had, had acted and done the jobs that we did in that time. And um, you do feel a responsibility to portray them correctly because they were heroes. It's a real sort of heroism. It's not um, flag-waving heroism. Although there's patriotism and all those elements of fighting for a good cause, but it's really about people in really dire circumstances overcoming those circumstances. Well, Jonathan didn't do that as well, so it's very nice that he just told the story the real way. And how you know, like I said, when the stakes are life and death, can you be too intense? No. Can you can you be too scared? No. You know, it's all those, those stakes give you the leverage and the license and, 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 and the clarification, I know, for me as an actor. Do that. What, under what circumstances would, would I or my friends be able to do that? And would I be able to do it? I don't, for myself, I don't know. I really don't know. I'd like to think that I would, but, you know, only, that's the thing about history. It's only those people in those moments will ever, will ever really know. But I must say, when you meet those people, the generation of men and women that fought World War II and won World War II for the free world, that generation, they built our country, they built a lot of other countries too.